stream uh, office hours q a in a while <clears throat> excuse me and uh i wanted to do one here to ask you all some questions i hope that's cool i think the way this is usually uh, works on youtube is that you would ask me questions or you would ask whoever's youtubing the questions but i have questions for you so uh, how do you like that? <laughs> what I, what I want to ask you is um, I, I want to get back to, to YouTubing more regularly. I started this channel, I don't know, 2013 uh, or 14 or something like that. And I was posting stuff regularly for for a, a few years and then I started doing stuff on Patreon and I thought, well, I should put my energy there. Uh, and so when I started doing that, I, I kind of tapered off doing uh, regular posts here. Um, and I want to get back to doing it more regularly. But when I think about what that would look like, um, sometimes I stop myself because I think of all the things that I that I don't want to do with this channel on YouTube. Um, I, I don't, for example, want to use it as a, a place to do gear reviews. Uh, there's just already so many people that, that do gear reviews and it's just not really where, where my head is or, or where my heart is anyway. I mean, obviously I use some gear <laughs> and uh, I'm always trying things and experimenting. So I, I could talk about just my process, I guess, of how, how I decide what's gonna work for me and what's not, but I wouldn't wanna do, you know, any kind of shootout of, 20 variations of something and or two variations of something um, and so on so that so that's something I, I don't want to do I don't want to teach how to play uh, cover songs really I'm, I, I've done a few things here over the years where I've taught stuff that I've played think you know things from records and stuff and I could talk about that um anyway and, and so on so when i start to think about doing youtube more regularly maybe once a week or something like that um i get kind of stuck because i think about all the things that i don't want to do so what i wanted to ask of you is what 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 might you like to see what kinds of things have i done in the past that you would like to see me do more of or what kinds of things have i not done that you wish i would do uh that would be really helpful for me to to get that kind of feedback if you're watching this now that means you're somebody who watches stuff on youtube and you sometimes watch me on youtube and i i would imagine you, you watch other stuff on youtube and so you might have 
a particular idea of, of the kinds of things that, that are my strong suit that I've done before or things that you would like me to do that I haven't really done before. So I'm curious what that would look like. So I'm asking you to, to put some ideas in the, in the comments here, either live if, if you're watching live or uh, later on in the comment section. Hey, Alex, how's it going, man? Oh, cheers to you. It's, it's really beer o'clock here as I do this. It's about uh, 20 after 5 on Sunday, and I, I don't have a beer handy, but if I did, I would uh, raise a glass and we could share a beer, Alex. Um, so uh, what do you think? Since you're here now, I'll ask you. If I was going to do stuff more regularly on YouTube, what kinds of things would you like to see me do? Uh, performances, lessons, interviews, live Q&As, other stuff? Uh, what do you think would be the most uh, cool way to uh, just do more with, with this channel? I, I would really like to do that, but uh, like I said, um, I kind of stop myself because <laughs> Think of it in a negative way. Hey, Ben. It's it's nice to hear that that you have enjoyed uh, the original series and uh, and some stuff on Patreon too. That's nice. Uh, if folks watching this don't know, uh, Alex also does stuff on YouTube and Patreon. I think on Patreon, definitely on YouTube and um, Instagram and. Uh, right? Do you have your own Patreon, Alex? No, I'm not sure if you do or not. But Alex is a great uh, teacher and player as well. So it's nice to get feedback from somebody who's really doing it. Thank you. 
Let's see, uh, Alex, I'll talk about it a little bit because maybe uh, that'll help me find uh, an idea and, and maybe we can go back and forth a bit. The, the things that I'm working on uh, most recently, one is just kind of getting this guitar dialed in um, finding a, the right kind of string for it, uh, kind of finding the right kind of gauge for it. Uh, it's been a process. When I, when I got this guitar from Callings, it had a Diodario uh, NYXL set on it, I think, with 11s. And I had never tried those before. That's just the, that was what came on the guitar. And... Uh, I like them, but they felt a little stringy for me. So I, and, and, and that was maybe a year ago or something like that. And I've been on this quest since then to just experiment and try different things. Um, and so again, this is one of those things where I, I stop myself from making a video about this because sometimes I, I just get self-conscious. I feel like if I make a video talking about, you know, some string that I love or some pick or amp or whatever, that um, that it's it sounds like such a definitive thing. And, and honestly, for me, uh, the, you know, there's a handful of things that I've done consistently uh, as far as strings or picks or amps or pedals or whatever over the years. But I'm always really uh, refining it, uh, either because my own tastes uh, may change over the years or, and or because my own circumstances may change. You know, a, a setup on a guitar that works really nicely when I'm doing a lot of gigs with a particular group or, you know, particular kind of music uh, if I find myself then moving in, into a, a different type of music or playing with a different group or just playing louder places or quieter places or whatever, uh, I may have to rethink, you know, what's the setup on the guitar. So uh, with those uh, Diodario 
NYXLs. Uh, the 11s were a little light, I, and I wanted a, a, a bigger sound, and, and so I went with this pure nickel set, this John Pierce set with a 12 on top, and that made this guitar feel really loud, like acoustically it was loud. This, this is a Collins I-30, and it's hollow, so uh, putting heavy strings on it uh, makes it a very loud guitar acoustically, uh, but I also found over time that I couldn't really shape the notes as much as I wanted to. And also it's just it's a lot of tension to deal, to, to deal with all the time. And uh, so anyway, I've been experimenting and experimenting. I went back to using this Diodario uh, EXL145 set, which is what I used to play on my 335s. Uh, like in the 90s, late 90s, that was my go-to set. And so I just I tried to put that set on this guitar, and that felt pretty good. That's a uh, with a 12, with a plain third. That's a set that I like. Uh, but I was missing some of the mellowness of the pure nickel. So just today I tried a new experiment, which is Dario makes a pure nickel, pure nickel set with a 12 on top, uh, and a wound third, and it goes 12 to 51, which is kind of surprising because the the other Daddario set, the nickel wound that I was using, is 12 to 54. So the, the bottom strings, uh, the, the three wound strings are a little bit thicker. And so this this is the Daddario Pure Nickel 12 set, but I swapped out a plain third, a 20. And this is the best that this guitar has ever felt to me. I've only had it a year, so maybe that's not saying much, but I've experimented a lot. So, uh, it, you know, I may change my mind next week or next month or next year, but right now the kinds of gigs I'm doing and how I want this guitar to feel, that's a really good setup. It, it just has to do with tension and um, overtones versus fundamentals, uh, nickel wound strings, to me, tend to have more overtones, which sometimes overshadows the fundamental. That's cool if you want a kind of hyped up sound, but if you want your sound to be more rooted, uh, then I, that's why I like the pure nickels. They they don't they're not as um, brassy. They're just more pure tone, and I really like that. So I think I've found a happy place. So that's a journey. I see. I don't know if that would make a great video but that's the kind of stuff that i'm thinking about a lot these days it's just getting all of my guitars as dialed in as i can so that uh, when i'm performing i don't have to think about any you know just the guitar just feels very free and i can play and uh, so that's one thing i've been thinking about lately another thing i've been thinking about uh, which i've thought about for a long time but i'm thinking about it more so now because something that uh, somebody said to me on a gig. So I've been playing a lot with a singer named Liz Wright. And uh, at some point in our shows, we, we often do this uh, jazz standard called I Concentrate on You. It's a Cole Porter song. So my accompaniment when she's singing is pretty simple. I really, I'm not using a, a lot of fancy jazz chords. I play I mean, that, maybe that is a fancy jazz chord, but I try to keep it kind of straightforward because Liz's voice is so full of, it's so rich and colorful, and the song is, is also just written so beautifully that you don't have to play uh, expensive chords to, to make it sound good. You know, let let Liz sing the song and let Cole Porter uh, shine through. And then I, I can just play quite simply. Uh, but then there's a, a point where she stopped singing and, and I would take a solo. And I was trying to like play uh, melody and chords and bass all at the same time. Thank you. 
And it was a lot of work. And um, at one point, Liz said to me, uh, why don't you just play like, like make the guitar sing and don't worry about all the chords and the bass. And so I took an instrumental break that was just melody. was plenty and it was more enjoyable for me and and, and uh, I could actually go more places by by doing trying to do less so I'm always looking for ways to make the guitar be like a voice um, in the context of playing with Liz Wright it's really nice to to get to kind of be another voice with her rather than playing guitar stuff when I when I get a chance to stretch out. Uh, it feels more natural to me to, to play in a more vocal way, which oftentimes means playing with limitations, not running up and down the neck so much, but just finding a little space to play. Now that I say it, that feels kind of like guitar stuff. See if I can finish the next four bars and just be as vocal as possible. seem to get away from the guitar stuff right now but so that's what's on my mind these days is uh making the guitar sing and uh, getting it dialed in so that it's fun to play oh my gosh now everybody's saying a bunch of stuff and uh, let's see uh ben uses 19 yeah play 19 yeah so much of this kind of stuff is is just a reality check like what can you find uh when I started using 12s with a plain third in the early 90s, Didario didn't make a set like that. So I was always buying their 12 gauge set and trying to find plain 20s, but I'm sure I sometimes used 19s or whatever. Um, you know, if you had back then, if you had a store that you dealt with a lot, maybe they could order some stuff for you. In, in bulk these days you know obviously there's amazon but that wasn't around then but a lot of it just comes down to yeah what you can get your hands on and then you, you make it work i mean that's just the reality of of all of this stuff um, even with amazon you can't just always get everything you want all the time and so you get what you can and then you you do the best with it and once you've invested some time if you've played those 19s for years that's that's what you want to hear um that's what you want to feel so that then that is the right answer you know you you might look at the package and go oh gosh that's not balanced tension i really should be using a, a 20 or an 18 or whatever that that would be a more balanced tension set but it doesn't matter like it's just what is comfortable for you 
hey, Adam Farmer, uh, I, I was I, I was in England uh, a week ago or so, and I got to uh, hang out with Alex, uh, and also I, I bumped into Adam. So that was just that was uh, uh, nice to actually get to to meet some folks that I had only ever interacted with uh, online. I you know I, I made a plan to meet up with Alex. And then later that same day, I was at a jazz festival in Cheltenham. Later that same day, I went to see Julian Lodge. And after the show, I was standing near the stage and I just happened to bump into to Adam Farmer. This kind of fun. Hey, um, uh, Abel Mesaros, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, is, is writing from Hungary. What do I think about flat wounds on acoustic? Um, I think if you're curious, you should try it. I don't love that. I don't love flat wands on acoustic. I've tried a few different things on acoustic. Um, Didario makes a set that are half round, or I think they're called flat tops or something, where they basically they start with a round wound string, but then they mill it or grind it somehow so that it becomes a flat wound, which is different than... A traditional flat wound string means they take the string and they wrap it with sort of a ribbon kind of winding instead of with a wire winding. And um, so the the flat top set is a, a, like a, a round wound that they grind down. Um, I, I like it. Uh, I like pure nickel on acoustic. I, mean, I think it really depends on what you're doing. And and you know what's what are you trying what what do you want your guitar to sound like and, and what's your touch like anything really could work. Uh, I would encourage you to experiment. I wouldn't I would never say like oh don't do that. But it's, it really depends on what you're going for. Um, flat ones would be nice in that uh, right out of the package they'd be mellower and and I don't always love brand new. Uh, acoustic strings because they're they're so brassy sounding so you would skip that part and you'd get straight to the mellow part um and if you like old records like from the 60s and 70s where uh, the acoustic guitar sounds mellow you might get your guitar to just sound like that you know right out of the gate so that that could be really cool um uh alex says uh, I totally agree in regards of gear being something we constantly refine. I find it really interesting to hear about the tone journey and experience of players whose sound I admire so much. Yeah, you know, if you've heard me play on records, like if you've if you've heard me on records, it's likely that those records are either Nora Jones's first record, Come Away With Me, or Tracy Chapman's record, uh, New Beginning, because those records actually you know, get on the radio sometimes. And those are generally me playing an ES-335 with round wound D'Addario strings with a 12 to 52 or 54 or whatever with a plain G. So people who've heard me on the radio have probably heard me playing uh, my 1979 ES-335 with uh, D'Addario round wound, uh, nickel wound, not pure nickel, but nickel wound, round wound strings. And that was my sound for a long time. I've in the last 10 or 15 years, I've I've tried different things. And now I think I'm trying to get closer back to that, but I'm enjoying the pure nickel just because it's a little bit warmer. Yeah, this is a real uh memory man, real deal. Uh plugs into the wall and you know, not with a wall wart but it's yeah it's a, i don't even know what year it's from but it's a fairly early one and it's fantastic and so I've, I've got a deluxe memory man going into a 1966 vibro champ that also has some tremolo going so i'm kind of stacking my modulation i guess
<laughs> Probably gonna break the chair I'm sitting on. Oh man, uh, am I coming to Middle Europe, Austria? I just was in uh, Europe. I played in Germany in a town called Kaiserslautern, which is kind of near Frankfurt. Uh, didn't get to Austria. We played in Switzerland. Uh, well, did we play in Switzerland? We played in... Yeah, we played in Zurich and Basel at the beginning of the tour. And then towards the end of the tour, we played in a French town called Tonon. Tonon? I'm saying it wrong, but it's not far from Geneva. Anyway, no, I don't have any more European plans right now at all. Uh, but I'll try to let you know when I'm coming back. Uh, oh, a mahogany OM. But it sounds a little too hi-fi. Oh, you know what, Abel? I would try, if I were you, on that guitar, if you want to mellow it out. Um, Tomastic Infeld makes a, a set called Plectrum. And I know it could be confusing because they also make a set called Spectrum. Uh, but the Plectrum set is pretty mellow. I have that set on a, a Waterloo guitar that I have. And uh, it's a wonderful sound. That's kind of hard to explain. But it's in the direction of flat wound. Um, that's what I would try. So when you asked about flat wound strings, I was thinking like, you know, just like a labella electric guitar set putting that on an acoustic guitar which might be really cool but um if if you can get to mastic strings where you are the plectrum set with a 12 on top might be fabulous on your om uh yeah i would try that uh ben says it's kind of funny that those late 70s early 80s uh, ES-335s get blasted as a bad era. Uh, yeah, they're, those are great guitars. Um, I think that's just snobbery, really. Like, what what else can I say? It's just snobbery. Uh, Beats and guitars, thanks for all the wisdom over the years. Thanks, everybody. I, I really appreciate it. I want to circle back to something that I was saying at the beginning of this, which is that... Um, I really have not been doing YouTube as regularly for the past few years. Basically, since I started doing Patreon, kind of went away from doing YouTube regularly. Whereas some people, uh, like my friend Jens Larsen, uh, does both. He's posting all the time on YouTube and has a Patreon channel. Somehow, in my mind, when I started doing stuff on Patreon, I thought, well, I guess I should give a, you know, more attention there because that's that's uh, you know people are paying for it and um i wanted to think about you know really doing something there and i i just stopped doing youtube regularly i want to get back to doing it because i like it uh and i don't know i think it's just a way to reach more people i, I love patreon because it's it's a sustainable model but it also tends to stay kind of inside its own bubble. And I'd like to find a way to reach more people. So I want to start YouTubing more regularly. But I I sometimes f am not sure what to post on YouTube. Be first of all, I've already posted a lot of things. So in my mind, I think, well, I, I could make a video about you know X, Y, or Z. But didn't I already do a video about that? But maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe I can revisit something I've done and, and, and talk about it in a new way, a fresh way. I also kind of shut myself down from things that I don't want to do. I don't want to, I don't want to do something negative, like here's the five things that you're doing wrong. I hate that kind of stuff. Uh, so I want to keep it positive. I don't really want to do gear reviews or uh, here's how to play uh, under the bridge or whatever. But I want to share what I know and answer questions and do some interviews and 
talk about the stuff that I that I'm curious about that I'm searching myself. So I would love to get feedback from you. I was getting some really nice uh, feedback at the beginning here from Alex Farron. Uh, but now that there's more of you here, I would love to know what you would like to see me do more of here. Either things I've done before, things I've never done. Uh, what would be interesting to you? Because I, if I'm going to do this regularly, I want to keep it interesting and not just uh, post just to post, you know? <laughs> Adam, that's true. We are always going in circles, so maybe I will repeat stuff. Uh, ben says, as a consumer, I go to YouTube to see performances. I go to Patreon for education and good performance. So that's something, you know, honestly, when I started this channel on YouTube, I thought of it as an educational channel, but I could certainly do more performances here. Uh, yeah. I, I forget that that's a thing, but I could just play for you and not make it a lesson where I talk a lot, you know? Oh, there's Jens. Wow. I'm sure you can revisit stuff and interviews are really fantastic. Man, Jens, thank you so much. That's really nice. That's good feedback. Um, uh, Pro says, would love to hear about recording techniques you use, uh, you use, home studio or studio tips, also business tips and talks. That's stuff I don't think about talking about. That's really great. Wow. Uh, always enjoy the insight in practice routines. That's really great. Okay. Wow. This is this is getting juicy now. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna noodle a little bit more, and maybe a couple more uh, replies will come in. <laughs> Talking about recording and studio stuff would be wonderful. Okay. It's so much more, uh, it's great to brainstorm with everybody. Watching YouTube day in the life type of things. Wow. I really haven't done those. But I would do.
Um, everybody, thank you so, so much for uh, the feedback and for being a subscriber and for just tuning in. I don't do these on a regular time, so uh, I guess you get a notification and, and you click on here. So I really appreciate that. Um, and I will, I will, uh, I'll, I'll be here more often. I don't know what my rhythm will be just yet. I'm thinking about that. Uh, but you give me a bunch of golden ideas and encouragement, and I really appreciate it. So thanks. Take good care. Stay tuned, and I'll see you soon.